Travis Wayne Goodsell. Excuse me, I'm burping orange juice. You can be together forever with your own family. Hell no! Want nothing to do with my family. And I'll give you a case example. Born and raised Mormon, going on 50 years. So this is a Mormon family. Both my parents serve missions. Uh, we go back to pioneer heritage except for one of the four lines. My mom's father's side. Uh, and so even though she's a Smith, it's not the Joseph Smith Smith. It's the North Carolina Smiths. But uh, uh, as a child, uh, living in Placentia, California, I go into Miller Elementary School. I uh, uh, decided one day I wanted to uh, do a lemonade stand. And apparently my parent, my mom helped. Uh, my dad was always gone working. So uh, she was the one who uh, went shopping and all that stuff. And so uh, uh, she had uh, bought the, the lemonade. Uh, it would have been the crystal lemonade. So that it would have been easy for me to make. And uh, I also wanted to do... Uh, a jelly bean count as a little contest incentive for people to come and and uh, participate in a lemonade stand and and so this was as a little kid and uh, I set it up either on a summer day or a, a, a Saturday and uh, uh, people were coming around from the neighborhood. They saw it and, and uh, were actually coming to participate. And uh, then my my sister Tiffany, I'm the oldest in the family, so they're all younger. And I hadn't hit puberty yet. She definitely hadn't hit puberty yet. So this is context for you about why I don't want anything to do with my family. <coughs> And uh, uh, she came out, saw that I was making money, and she wasn't. And she saw that uh, I had jelly beans, that uh, I, I was uh, going to give to whoever could guess right. And so here's why I don't want anything to do with my family. She ran in the house complaining to mom making the false allegation because I hadn't made the decision yet I hadn't counted yet I didn't want to bias the count so I was gonna wait till the end of the day and then count the jelly beans at the end of the day she said that I was rigging the contest hadn't even started the count yet how could I be rigging it she assumed I was going to as a matter of getting me shut down and sure enough mom came storming out and took over and uh, immediately went to the jar of jelly beans dumped them out on the table and began counting she had gotten another jar I guess from the house and put the jelly beans in that one and so mom did the official count before everyone had an opportunity to make a guess and so my whole lemonade stand was shut down I lost the money I lost the contest I didn't get the jelly beans <laughs> and so I was completely, oh, I got a sneeze coming on. <coughs> Oy vey. Uh, and so, uh, that's what it was like growing up Mormon. Uh, 
my own Mormon family rigged against me whatever I tried to do to be productive and self-sustaining and sufficient in my life. They didn't give me an opportunity, they didn't give me a chance, they shut me down whenever I made the attempt. So, now, crank up the time, 1996, August, uh, my new family, that I fled from my old family for, but uh, hoped that my old family had grown up. Uh, nope. I uh, moved to Utah for the first time in my life. Uh, under the guise that uh, my parents had moved into a brand new subdivision home and it had a, a fully uh, built uh, basement apartment for us. And, uh, uh, and there would be lots of jobs available because the 2002 Winter Olympics was announced for Utah, so everybody's booming to, to get business uh, in preparation for the Olympics. Well, I, I come to Utah, and uh, it turns out uh, we had to stay in my parents' apartment in Kearns. So just across the street <laughs> and I, I were there camping out in the living room of the apartment the house wasn't even completed let alone the basement and so my parents again lied and deceived in order to get me to come down to Utah under their care. They had no intention of changing their their hearts and minds as to how to treat their own firstborn son. They were using me to build the basement for them. And so, uh, yeah, I lost my family as a result of my family's abuse. As she, uh, my first ex, took advantage of their abuse and uh, turned them uh, against me, which they were already turned against me, but she used that to her advantage to justify abandoning the marriage, abducting the kids, and fleeing the country, and stealing my research on Paleo-Hebrew that I just deciphered in February <laughs> of two th or 1997. Oh, God. Uh, and so... That's what I learned about Mormons coming to Utah, is that they rig the game against you. If you don't play by their rules, you're ruined. And every Mormon is activated on it to ruin your life, to deny you opportunities, to take your opportunities away from you. And uh, that's what I've been doing videos warning about as uh, Utah has cut 400 beds from the homeless, as uh, Gary Herbert uh, calls protesters domestic terrorists and has them arrested, as uh, cops are shooting unarmed persons and, and getting away with it after the review of the tape that they hold for longer than the nine days. And then of course what they did to me. They took away my life. They had me disappeared. That's gangster stuff. But they had me disappeared. Six years of my life. You know, and they all claim, oh, we love Jesus. We follow Jesus. Families can be together forever as long as you do what we say. And so, 
Yeah. Now I'm faced with a situation where uh, I have a clear-cut victory over the church in my federal lawsuit, but be the judge refuses to respond. What do we do when the time's up? Does she just say, oh, time's up, I guess you lose, ha ha ha. A judge in contempt of her own court. This is what we deal with here in Utah as victims of the church and the Mormons. They rigged the game against us. They don't follow the laws of the federal government and the Constitution. They make their own laws. Just like in Noah did. Mosiah 29. He explains it. No kings. But now we have a king and we can't get rid of him. We have 2,000 former federal prosecutors all complaining. We demand bar re quit. He's not going to quit. <laughs> Rachel Maddow yesterday, uh, her show, she exposed that once Barr took over, he shut every investigation down. Not just what he's done recently. He's been shutting down investigations from the moment he took office. So Trump's family, remember those scandals? They're gone now. Barr shut them down. Trump's not going to get in trouble for anything now. As long as he's in power, Trump is safe. Trump's getting away with it. The game is rigged. America is turning into the system practiced here in Utah for decades. This is the danger we face in America. Because they're patterning themselves after the Mormons of Utah. After the church in Utah. This is the worst case scenario that uh, Obama's Department of Justice announced their concern over. The worst case scenario that Trump as the leader, Church as the leader of Utah, would use the Justice Department to protect themselves from crimes and go after their opponents. This is exactly what the church does in Utah. And they don't just use the Justice Department. They use the courts. They use the legislature of the state as well. They use defense lawyers. You can't get a defense in Utah against the church. You're screwed. The game is rigged in Utah. This is a crime organization, guys. This is the very definition of a crime organization. Rigging the system. And, and for Mormons to think, oh, this is, this is Zion, this is the kingdom of God. We're helping to build the kingdom of God by punishing the heathen. Oh, my God. And they don't see themselves as fanatical. They don't see themselves as a cult. And it's technically a cult. You know, the inverted pentagrams with the temple rituals. The loyalty oaths. It's an occult, not a cult. So those of you who are Christian, coming to my video for the first time, and you're going, what's this about uh, Mormons? And they're a cult. A cult. Not cult. A cult. So it's a, a cult group. Worshipping Satan, following his plan of happiness, as the Mormons call it. Because the Mormons know better. They know the difference between Lucifer's plan of happiness and the Heavenly Father's plan of happiness and their theology. If you're not familiar, Mormons, they, uh, in their theology, believe uh, Lucifer is the brother of Jesus. And it comes from the Egyptian religion, but nobody cares or wants to use that as the explanation. Uh, but... Uh, yeah. So Mormons know better, but they choose to turn a blind eye to it all. Because they don't want to admit the fact that they're worshipping Lucifer. Literally worshipping Lucifer 
and they're calling him Jesus Christ. It's me, Jesse, did a video a couple of days ago about how Mormons don't worship the same Jesus as Christians. <laughs> and I told her that the Mormon Jesus is actually Ammon. Adam on Diamond, Son Ammon. Come on, Mormons. <laughs> and, uh, but Brigham Young, no. He wanted nothing to do with Ammon and, and uh, Adam on Diamond. He had no intention of going back. He had his kingdom already built here in the Salt Lake Valley. And so, uh, yeah, with his pentagrams. He, Brigham Young, put the pentagram on the Nauvoo Temple. He put the pentagram on the Seagull Gate on uh, State Street with the Capitol building right between them up on the hill. He put the uh, inverted pentagrams on the Salt Lake Temple. Brigham Young. Brigham Young turned Joseph's religion into an occult. And thus rigged the whole system because they were furious with the United States with the Edmunds Tucker Act. Disincorporated the church, took away all the citizenship from the Mormons, no longer Americans. And so, yeah, they had to stop polygamy. So, man, it's a nightmare here, and we're trapped. We're held hostage because you can only get out of Utah if you have money. When they control how much money you get, you're screwed. Uh, and that's what I experienced on my mission in New York, New York. The people were trapped in poverty. They couldn't get another apartment. They couldn't just move to go visit their family and friends in Jamaica or Jamaica, Queens. They were trapped. And, uh, and now I know just how they were trapped as the game is rigged against me. And it was rigged against me in Utah by Mormons, by the Mormon church because I deciphered Paleo-Hebrew. Yep, I proved Joseph Smith was right. <laughs> and as Lewis Zucker from the University of Utah gave a BYU lecture saying Joseph was wrong. <laughs> and all Mormons trust him, giving him respect, rather than saying, wait a minute, we need to figure this out for ourselves. John Tvetness, you're the were I guess you're no longer working for the church. You're retired. But you were the church's foremost Hebraist. And he couldn't do it. <laughs> I come in uh, as a 27-year-old, <laughs> just a young whippersnapper, and I'm saying, hey, Joseph is right. Here it is. Paleo-Hebrew deciphered. <laughs> and so they all get out the pitchforks and the burning crosses and or the burning Mormon statues. They don't use crosses in Mormonism. How dare we? The Egyptian Ankh is a blasphemous pagan symbol of the devil. We worship the true devil. <laughs> oh God. So what a nightmare it is here in Utah. We need help. Help us. Free us. <laughs> We're trapped and we can't get out. <laughs> uh.